From where I sit, I get to see a lot of early indicators that really tell us where the economy is going. Is it going to be more consumer focused, more savings focused, more export focused? I can take these bits and pieces that I get from leaders all around the world and put together a coherent view of where the economy is going. What does 2015 look like? And what's it going to mean for you? My main message is one of good news. And I emphasize this because most of what we hear, most of what we read, is about bad news. It's about all the good things we have to worry about and the way stuff might go wrong. And there is plenty of stuff to worry about, legitimately. I could talk for an hour about all the things to worry about and the things that might go wrong. But it would obscure the larger and more important reality, which is that the truth is things are looking good and looking better. I don't want to second guess the zillions of economists who are out there making a living <laughs> forecasting, but just look at the consensus numbers, right? The IMF forecast for US economic growth is 2.2% this year, increasing to 3.1% next year. Now, that is by far the best of any large developed economy in the world. By far the best. And just in and of itself, it is good. We often forget that over the past 40 years, the past 40 years, the US economy has averaged <laughs> growth of 2.8% a year. And that includes all those great years of most of the 80s, most of the 90s, the first seven years of this century. 3.1% is terrific. And the global economy is expected to accelerate also. Again, just look at the consensus forecasts. 3.3% growth this year, accelerating to 3.8% next year. And yes, I know that China is slowing down to a mere, a mere 7.2% this year, right? We're still going to see global growth increase to 3.8%, a very respectable rate. This is good. And I emphasize this upbeat message because we have been so psychologically beaten down over the last several years, right? The financial crisis, then the recession, then some years of pretty slow economic growth. It really gets a lot of people into thinking that, you know, I guess that's just the way it is. The danger is that we fall into the error of thinking, yeah, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it's going to be. And we have seen this happen before, by the way. In the late 70s and early 80s, when we had terrible, terrible inflation, people were severely traumatized by it. My first mortgage was at 15%, right? And I know there are plenty of people in this room who have similar stories. The problem is that years later, public opinion polls showed that large numbers of Americans said inflation is one of our worst economic problems. And this was even when inflation had come down to 2%. They still thought inflation is one of our worst problems. The important thing is that means they were making bad decisions. Because if they really believed inflation was one of our worst problems, they were doing things to protect themselves in a high inflation environment. They weren't doing things to find opportunity in the actual low inflation environment. They were making bad decisions. We risk falling into the same error. We've got to face the fact that this is an era of good economic growth. It's full of opportunity. That's the new reality that we have to face. So once we have finally accepted and embraced this new reality, we then realize that even though the economy is growing at the rate it used to, it isn't growing in the same way it used to. Opportunity is out there, but we have to get there in a different way. And I want to suggest three principal changes in the way this good economy is growing, ways that we have to adapt to. It. 